I've uh, a background in uh, in psychology. In fact, my my undergraduate degree was at the University of Zimbabwe, um, quite a while ago, where I did a very experimental type of uh, program in 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 psychology. I then came to UCT in 1990 and uh, did uh, an honors in organizational psychology. And then over the years, I have uh, sort of been in and out of industry, worked for a decade, come back to UCT to do my master's in, again in organizational psychology. One of the industries that I worked in was the construction industry, where I got involved quite a lot for instance, in, in as the enterprise development manager in, in, in a in a quite a big multi-billion run project in, in Pretoria East, building the with the current uh, uh, Department of, of uh, Foreign Affairs headquarters, where the client required us to develop uh, small businesses and skills in the construction industry in the community. My interest was really to look back at the at a, at a what I call a, a prime decade for the construction industry. That is that is the decade that covered the World Cup year in 2010. My my theory was that if ever there was a time when an industry could have done a lot to go beyond the the legislation in terms of skills and construction and 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 uh, development of SMEs that was the decade it also happens to be the decade where the 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 BEE sort of regulations were uniform they changed again in 2013 after being implemented in 2003 so that that decade sort of framed my research period because of because of the, the stability of the of the laws then just to see in a in a industry that is bound both in terms of its definition and in terms of time the decade what industries and what companies what the big role players did about enterprise development about about uh, developing small businesses i think that uh, particularly now that there's a whole glamour for a lot more radical look at a number of things. We have the four list movement here. We have got uh, in the mining industry again, again people are struggling with the attempts at radicalizing issues even more and throwing away probably a decade, a decade and a half of experience. I think that. Uh, us as PhD students or universities have a have a, a role to play in actually saying what did we learn from from the decade that that we had an opportunity to do something what did companies do are we going to how can we prevent the baby being thrown out with the bath water so that that is really the gist of my of my research to tease out the lessons from that decade the successes look at the environment and say what is it that that uh, uh, f enhanced the development of small businesses what is it that militated against the development of small businesses and see whether that can be taken forward and that can be theorized about i've got a great uh, supervisor jeff beck who is a senior professor here and uh, um, he has allowed me to talk to some fairly senior professors all over the place in entrepreneurship development and I've learned quite a bit from them in terms of how to look at a local problem through international eyes and actually say what is what is standard practice what is a benchmark what are the international benchmarks in the narrow area of business incubation and, and more broadly in enterprise development. And one of the things that I've, I've started getting into, for instance, is, is a, this, this a whole theory called a institutional entrepreneurship that is starting to explain a lot of things that I saw, particularly when you look at corrupt practices, uh, the construction industry unfortunately is not quite a saint in that direction 
When you start looking at that and you see that other researchers internationally have actually looked at that, particularly look, people looking at, at practices in Eastern Europe and saying, and saying corruption is actually a, a, a distorted version of institutional entrepreneurship. And all those things are helping me to actually use that lens or, or a number of other lens, lenses as well to, to, to look at this problem and say, what does it look like to scholars? Uh, and, and who knows, maybe is there certain characteristics that can be identified and, and perhaps uh, sort of we can put up a bit of resistance against it if we know exactly how it manifests, what, it, what causes it, what kind of environments cause or, or cultivate uh, corruption. And, and the construction industry with its contracts obviously is ripe for a lot of things.